Okay, time for a retrospective. I'm going to go over the past predictions that I've made with the 50 videos that I've made, and there are 21 of them on VidMe as well as the 50 that are on YouTube, just to see how I've done, how my predictions have fared, and talk a little bit about some of the older videos that I did. Um, for no other point that I think it'd be fun, so I'm going to do it. Uh, the first video that I created for this channel was Bad Analysis Jungle Book. I actually planned to do this more often with a number of different uh, movies where I took the intended meaning of the movie, completely butchered it, and got something completely different out of it, and then I just didn't keep it up. The next one I was going to do was going to be Mad Max Fury Road because it really is an anti-feminism movie if you think about it long enough. The mothers are living in sand, and they're mostly dead, and the only thing that are left are, what, four or five women, and they come back, and the first thing they do when they liberate a functional patriarchal society is release all the water to the poor people, effectively making it so that they have no water reserves, none of the plants on the top of that little enclave thing they have are going to grow, and they effectively can't trade anymore because they freed all the women that make the milk. And Joe had a science program going where he's trying to create a, um, a perfect human. And then I just never made the video. But maybe I should go back to this and, I don't know, do this again. But I really haven't seen any movies that I really want to do this to. So whatever, let's move on. Now, uh, this is just, this video was all about how the media lies on all sides and how terrible the reporting is. Uh, false righteousness and airport protests. Potential solutions. One of the things I always try to do in my video is if I'm going to complain about something, I also want to put a positive spin on it on the end or a solution or a way forward. And I did so in this video. So let's check it out, specifically the solution aspect of what I've said. So in summation, if you actually want to crack down on these protests and you don't want to use them for some Machiavellian pr purpose like Obama did to say that every uh, catastrophe and even manufactured catastrophes that he himself manufactured take political advantage of that let's say you don't want to do that and you want to take a different tack which seems to be the way that Donald Trump's going if you really want to be the law and order president you go after their funding which means George Soros you go after anyone who breaks the law if you break the law, then immediately there should be consequences for it, and people have to know that there are consequences for that, which will happen because everybody's got a smartphone in their pocket. They'll take video of it. It'll get out there. So all you got to really do is crack down on that. Trump has not gone after the money, much to his detriment. He still should, and it wasn't really much of a prediction, more of a what could possibly be done. But in two days, there's going to be a Trump free, free speech rally in Portland. Now, Portland, similar to Berkeley, California, is a liberal hotbed. And there are a lot of Antifa running around. It's where, um, for example, Michael Strickland from Laughing at Liberals, that's where he got all of his footage. And you can see that they would consistently break things around the city. So in two days... Watch the live stream, or if you don't hear anything about it, then you'll know that nothing had happened. I'm going to suspect that in two days on Sunday, at this Trump free speech rally, despite all the people that are there, the police officers will take an active approach to tamping down any type of mob justice, or both sides attacking each other, which will be most likely instigated by Antifa, because if Antifa does not have the support of the mayor and the police officers, with specifically with the police officers standing down like they did in, in Berkeley, then there's no way that any bad things are going to happen. So we'll see on Sunday whether I'm right or not. I, I expect it to be nothing. I expect to take a look at the live stream, hear some of the journalists saying, oh, we've heard from cops that they're doing X, Y, and Z. And then there may be one or two minor incidents, but it won't be anything like uh, the Milo Yiannopoulos Berkeley burning and attacking a building uh, that we saw in the past. Okay, on to a critique of Justice Democrats. And they've had a little time here to play out 
generally what their strategy is and what their direction is. And it hasn't been so good. I don't think they listened to the criticisms that people had for them on the left, and especially not for me. They never would. But these questions, these critiques, were never really addressed or answered. And right now, Justice Democrats is effectively done. I mean, they'll still push it, they'll still get some money with it, but as far as this goes, not looking so good. Um, it's kind of interesting, the first video that was demonetized was a uh, an anti-war video <laughs> where I didn't want to go to war with Iran, but there aren't any predictions in it. So, I'll move on. Uh, Venezuela socialist collapse, yeah, no shit. It's only getting worse. Um, they're eating pets. They're probably cannibalizing each other, and no one wants to no one wants to touch this. No mainstream media or media really wants to look at this situation because it is dire, it is brutal, and it is only going to lead to which party is going to be starving you in Venezuela. It's either going to be socialism full or socialism light that's starving you in the end because there's really no easy way out of this unless you bring in a Pinochet. And it might be many years before that actually happens, or there's a collapse, or some kind of intervention. But I really, really hope that it's not the U.S. intervening. And there's nothing really to gain from it, so there probably won't be anyway. But very fascinating situation if you want to see the end results of socialism every single time. And there's one playing out right now, right in front of us, that not a lot of people know about. Um... Jeff Sessions, no predictions in this, but so far, so good. Uh, Michael Strickland, um, he should have been sentenced sometime in May. And in fact, before I made this video, I did a little research on him. His sentencing was, it says no prison, but that's actually false. Um, three years probation, 40 days in jails on weekends for waving a gun around. He can't own a gun anymore, 240 hours of community service, and he can't film any protests for a year unless he clears it first with his probation officer and also has a number of court fees to pay. They're going to be uh, appealing the ru ruling, uh, at least his lawyers will, but in terms of 40 days in jail and losing the ability to own a firearm, and 240 hours of community service, all these other things. I think that's very warranted. In fact, that's that's probably better. I mean, he was looking at up to 50 years in prison. 40 days? That sounds, uh, all in all, it sounds reasonable. It sounds like justice was served in this case. So that's that's excellent. That's, um, instead of the judge playing politics, he seems to have come through and given a reasonable punishment that fits the crime accordingly. Um, it's funny in this, in the bottom of this article, it was determined that Strickland should autistic tendencies, maybe the author of this article should autistic tendencies as well, showed autistic tendencies or Asperger's syndromes. Those findings could greatly change the course of the trial. Yeah, in Portland. <laughs> Moving on, audit the Fed. Still got to do it someday. It's kind of interesting. This video here had some pretty good potential solutions in it, and only four people watched it. The Audit the Fed video was probably the laziest video that I made. Nine views, an hour, 50 minutes long. It was okay. It wasn't great. Yeah. Donald Trump's war on the media makes Fox's Shepard Smith sad. Yeah, he's, um, <laughs> he's still sad. Not many people watch that either. Or the first 30 days in review. You did a pretty good job. First 30 days, first 100 days. Granted, there's a lot of slowdown in Congress, which is keeping him from the full 100 days that he's doing. But overall, I'm pretty pleased. Star is born. Political plant. The Express thinks, though. Yeah, and this guy completely faded after this. He had his quick little five minutes of fame. Jumped around on stage with Donald Trump. Gave him a hug. And that was it. So... I mean, anyone with a cardboard cutout in there, in there, <laughs> as a shrine that they continuously play to, Secret Service probably isn't going to like that guy spending too much time around the president in their future. 
Hillary concedes again. Yep. And she's still blaming people to this day. It keeps going. Chairman Perez came out exactly as I thought he would. I just have to say that the DNC selecting Tom Perez is both a great thing and a bad thing. The great thing is that the Democratic Party has once again shown that they do not care about their voting base at all. They don't care about progressive values or progressive voters. They don't care about Bernie Sanders supporters. They don't care about principles. They care about money and influence and corporations providing both of those to them to try to win seats. But with Perez in there, uh, <laughs> the only benefit is that... Uh, is that the Democratic Party is going to continue to lose to the point where they might, I mean, at this point, they, they might stop, they might not exist as a major political party in the future. Give them another four years, give them another eight years, and they continue to lose and have no answer to this and refuse to change, then what voters are they going to have left? But the bad thing, and this is just absolutely terrible, is that with the selecting of Tom Perez, I'm going to have to find somebody else to lampoon. I'm going to have to find somebody else to go after because the Democrats just, they have nothing left. We have a president who is in, I don't know who he is, Putin or Trump. They're in a romance. This is really weird. He, 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 he's trying to kill health care for people, but he doesn't take... He doesn't like the name Trump Care. He says it's Ryan Care. You know what? Trump Care, Ryan Care, I'll tell you what it is. It's I don't care because they don't give a shit about John Burton about the people who they're hurting. Yes, that is the DNC chair in California in front of a group of Democrats being heckled and yelled at various things. They may cheer here and there when they like something, but they continually just are yelling at him in like a lobby of like 50 people. You got to admit, ah, Tom isn't doing such a bang up job. The only image that actually came out of this first presidential address, which anyone will actually remember, is the picture that I used in the thumbnail now of Nancy Pelosi looking like there was something stuck in the side of her mouth. Ooh, this will be an interesting one. Higher minimum wage equals less jobs. Um, we can see if this one actually came true. So let's take a look at that and see if there's any evidence to suggest that this is correct. So if the analysis that I did prior actually holds up to be true, then the states that should be having problems today would be lower than average in terms of labor force participation rate should be California, District of Columbia, and Minnesota. And I should also look at Alaska. Anything else? Um, South Dakota. This is um, April 2016 to April 2017 um, unemployment changes. Just the significant ones. The average of this is 1.7%, 1.72%, excuse me. So anything below that, that happens to be one of these earlier indicated states is a correct assumption that minimum wage actually reduces jobs. So let's see. Um, California, 1.4. That is lower than 1.7%. So that's positive for my assertions 1.7 uh, it's pretty close so that's not a win not a loss um, District of Columbia is not on the list Alaska ooh minus 2.1 percent that's pretty significant but then again the population is a lot smaller that's 7,200 jobs. Wow, that's a lot of losses. Uh, what was the other? South Dakota. South Dakota. Is that on the list? Yes, it is. 1.8. So they actually did slightly better. Let's see. So it looks like the job losses in Alaska transferred over to South Dakota. Go energy in industry. So overall... 
sort of true. I mean, California has a huge population. And they're lagging behind. Alaska, really bad. And then South Dakota, eh, this could be due to the energy boom. This is the best data I could find on such short notice. It does seem to support it, except for South Dakota, which could be uh, based on policy more than that, whereas California's industries, who knows? But, yeah, it appears to be um, nothing to really change my mind in terms of the latest statistics, at least. I wish I could find January 2007, but... I mean, 2017. But I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It just looks like... Yeah, if you want to watch that whole video where I go over all the labor force participation rate, the numbers that I use, the reasons that I used them, and then the graphs I came up with, um, watch that video. It's still, uh, it still looks like the more you increase minimum wage, the more you lose jobs. So moving on. Loretta Lynch, as I'm sure you're aware, is... Uh, She's in the hot seat with this whole unmasking thing. This really hasn't come out to fruition yet. So the predictions that I made in this particular video, I'm just going to skip over because they haven't come true one way or the other, whether it's true or not. Um, and if black people left America, that doesn't have any predictions in it. But a number of views, apparently, y'all motherfuckers racist. So I guess you like these types of videos. All right, on to the next list. It's another video that people loved, the uh, gender bending the debates, which was a fascinating video. And I understand why they haven't actually posted the full video of these people reenacting the debates, along with the side-by-side -side of the actual debates to see how close and how precise these people are. Because they want to sell tickets to their live show. And they might have even used this. Well, nothing but upvotes, too. People really like this video. It's fun to make. Um, Rebel jumps the shark. Yeah, they did. Uh, they're still running exactly the same as they were. Of course, uh, I believe when I made this video, Lauren Southern left them as well. And she should just stick to raw reporting. Um, this is the only time you see all the dogs over on the left side. This is the only time I move the dog down here. To make them look like the shark that you can barely see. This is probably the worst thumbnail I've made so far. Don't think I'm going to do this again where I move the dog. I like him in this left corner. It's uh continues the same thing. Uh, technological regression. Yeah, that's uh, that's still going on. Nixon's southern strategy is a democratic lie. This is a not a prediction, but it's something that happened in the past, which I pretty much well documented. And I feel like using this as a bludgeon over someone that pulls out the, oh, well, the Democrats and the Republicans switched places. Yeah, this video will tell you everything that you need to beat someone over the head with this whole tactic of using revisionist history, where they say, oh, Democrats have always been pure. No, Democrats are the party of the slavery. Democrats are the party of segregation. They're the party of Jim Crow. They're the party of the KKK. Well, or at least the KKK was the enforcement arm of the Democrats. And guess what? They're the party of welfare now, which is modern-day slavery. Trump Kills Big Bird. Um, pretty stupid video that was just fun to make. No predictions in this one, but I like drawing these dogs. These two dogs were fun to draw. One, of course, being the turncoat redcoat, and the other being, of course, the patriotic northern rebel, drunken, drunken, false flagging, riot inducing rebel. Whatever it takes to uh, be allowed to continue to smuggle your goods without taxes. What if Google was evil? Uh, yeah, they, they kind of are. They kind of are. But they didn't, they weren't going to follow this plan to begin with. It's not really a prediction. Minute Earth. Um, this is really more just explaining about a propaganda cycle, so it doesn't have any specific predictions. But I wonder if people are starting to 
look at edutainment a little differently. Oh, this video on H3H3. Yeah, this was uh, this was proven correct something like the very next day when Ethan from H3H3, after posting this video on the FTC regulations, then came out and produced a video on the Wall Street Journal where he didn't check into whether it was true or not and then the following day after that pulled the video down and made an apology and said everything in the past video was wrong because I didn't really investigate it so as far as I'm concerned this came true the very next day Nebraska Democratic Party voter fraud um, be interesting to see what happened with this. I'll take a look and uh, the investigation didn't go anywhere. Um, the last posting on this particular subject was back in March. And now it looks like everybody's just moved on to the Democrats losing mayoral races. Can you return to TV? I think the answer was already, oh, always no for everyone. Anyone who watched this video already said no. Unless they were somehow got stuck in YouTube for some reason. Ugh. Please stand by, we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Sorry about that, just found a huge tick on my dog which broke my stream of rambling about these videos and I mean uh, the huge tick was on me because I am white dog. Not the dog that brought the tick to me and told me to take it off of him and then take him for a walk. So back into the retrospective. Uh, where the hell was I? Oh yeah. Top feminist of all time. It's still Maggie Thatcher for me. That was a pretty fun video to make too. I should do uh... This is sort of my wheelhouse right now. Really sarcastic flowing videos with a lot of just crazy bullshit. Oh yeah, when did I start um at some point I started I think it was around I think it was around Trump kills Big Bird that I started well no I won't click on it now but I think around Trump kills Big Bird I started for every image that I used I would insert a dog somewhere so there's one of these white dogs, or at least his head, or maybe his tail, or something, hidden within the picture. And I don't think anyone has it, I mean, maybe someone has noticed it, but they haven't mentioned it yet in the comment section. And then I stopped doing it. Um, maybe it was Guns Against Tyranny was the first one. I think that was the first one. But every image that was in the video has somewhere, either it's hidden in someone's beard, or it's up against the wall, or it's in plain sight, or it's in the background, or it's large. And then I stopped doing it. I should bring that back, because that was fun to do. Even though it was just so time-consuming. Um, oh yeah, I was all the way up here, wasn't I? The Shill Solution. Um, <laughs> this wasn't so much of a prediction, but it was interesting to see that the, uh, the David Brock... Media Matters slash Share Blue slash Correct the Record completely changed strategies within the day. It was one day of them going after um, ISPs, and then I'm sure the ISP said, "Hey, cool it. You know, we pay your bills too, and we give you access to the internet, and we can shut you off." And then all of a sudden, it quieted up, and they had completely different marching orders the very next day. So that didn't last too long, and it was a solution. Syrian chess, um, yeah, this came out 100% true. Uh, looks like only five people actually viewed it, and of course it got demonetized because, well, it's about Syria. I love hockey, you should too. Um, of course the Bruins got eliminated from the playoffs. So that was a major tragedy, which I used in a later video on uh, countering Ar Armored Skeptics' lazy climate change video. I don't actually have any puppies, so I couldn't send any of them to Syria or Iraq or Afghanistan or anything like that. So this was just a blanket threat, which didn't have any meaning behind it. I hope people got that out of the video, but this one was a lot of fun to make. 
as well. Um, 13 views, that's... You know, the funny thing about this is, when I'm making a video, I tend to either put a lot of effort into it or minimal effort into it and I just want to get some type of idea across and then the views are just all over the place some of the videos that I really like I mean this I really liked making this video I think it's a quality video it only has 13 views and then a video that I'm lazier on let's see what's a good example of this um, Trump kills Big Bird this was kinda of stupid and got 101 views, and then the one that I actually care about and like gets 13 views. Yeah, what, whatever, not a big deal. No good option with North Korea. Um, this I made a prediction in, and it hasn't necessarily come true, but Kim Jong-un came out and said that the CIA tried to assassinate him in his home country. And that rhetoric right there wasn't typical of what comes out of North Korea. They don't typically do that for any propaganda purpose. So that was kind of a, a tip to see, well, wait, do, are we dealing with it like that? And it just happened to fail and we didn't go through with the entire plan. So this is still a wait and see. But it's interesting that that assassination attempt, the poisoning attempt, whatever it happened to be, was mentioned and I was thinking uh oh is that it is is here we go but then playing hardball with um with China well who knows maybe in um Kim Jong Un is going to keep shooting off those missiles and keep testing those nukes so at some point going to have to make a decision it'll be interesting to see whether they pick the actual um solution that's that's not a good option just as the title suggests uh, whether they actually pick the option that I've suggested uh, or not, we'll see. Uh, this is just a bunch of ride footage. It's interesting that the guy with the bike lock uh, attempted murder guy was arrested. Identified by poll, um, doing excellent research to catch this associate professor or assistant professor, whoever he was. I mean, this guy is teaching people. And he's going out there with a bike lock and just smacking people over the head. I think he should go to prison for quite a long time for attempted murder. Multiple attempted murders. And we'll see how that uh, that trial plays out. This solution still exists. Uh, it's touched upon here and there, but it hasn't been pursued. So I would say that... Um, not like this is a prediction. This was not a prediction. This was more of a suggestion and climate change I'll just skip over those um, is there anything really to say well Thunderfoot <laughs> it's pretty obvious that uh, people didn't really pick up that Thunderfoot's science is also suffering from his political bias but they are very well aware that through a number of different vi videos whether it be Lauren Southern Stephen Molyneux apparently he went after as well I didn't watch any of those videos and then Sargon of Akkad he went after with disingenuous selective editing, quote mining, really just bad emotional arguments that people called him out rightfully on to the point where he jumped out of the skeptic sphere because he didn't want to deal with it anymore for, I don't know, some insane reason. And then Armored Skeptic, um, yeah, he's going to continue to produce just high, there's no prediction in this, um, nothing really to say. Uh, this was a fun video to make though just because at this point I had already done all the research to counter Thunderfoot's fear mongering and then Armored Skeptic comes along with a video like the very next day because it was around Earth Day so everybody loses their fucking minds and they get all guilt tripped so they have to uh, make videos that are just poorly researched and just poorly put together not in terms of editing and then making this video was fun because I could put editing in there and a number of different pictures and you'll find that there are dogs in a lot of the castle pictures that you're flowing through within this video in the beginning there are dogs hidden on fireplaces and on walls and on cracks in the, in the ground and stuff like that so that was that was pretty fun to put together yeah the Yemen video is uh, 
well, it was true at the time. It's still true now. The media is just ignoring it, as they should. Donald Trump, of course, quite recently with his international tour, goes over to Saudi Arabia, does a little sword dance, holds on to a giant glowing tube, uh, giant glowing globe, and sells him a bunch of weapons. So nothing has changed in this, and it's probably the way that it's going to continue. When I made this video, it was a request to do this video. Because I honestly hadn't looked into it too much. So when I started looking into it, I was trying to do it in my normal, sarcastic, funny, entertaining way. And then about halfway through the video, I was saying, oh shit, this subject matter just does not fit this style whatsoever. But I kept pushing through anyway and just did it. Uh, this is a fun video, more diversity in superhero movies now. I was trying to trap people into this who were looking for um, something to get enraged about. And then just completely pull a 180 where I'm talking about how the villains are all white males, typically blonde. Most of the time Nazis. Sometimes Russians. And all of the time rich, powerful, successful white males. Because those are the only people that you can actually have as villains, apparently in any type of movie, not just superhero movies. Oh yeah, the one janitor. Um, I think what happened with this guy is he just... he's just on autopilot, and he doesn't really think, and he doesn't really care about his YouTube channel. So he still puts in the minimal effort to continually put out, crank out videos for money, I guess, and then just let his channel move along. I'm sure he gets something out of it, but... It seems like he's just really intellectually lazy. And he's been that way for at least the past seven or eight videos that I looked at like four of them and they were all just the same kind of intellectually, yeah, lazy is the only really way to say it. It's too bad Noam Chomsky's getting older now, so he's sort of uh, more and more painful to listen to. And it takes him so long to get to the point where this video was fun to counter his arguments, but it was not fun to watch this guy for so long. But then meanwhile, I still made a almost 40 minute video about it. And 76 views, that's quite a lot of views. Um, Narco-syndicalism must be an interesting subject for people. I, I found it interesting. Uh, it's retarded, never work in society, or well, work in a limited capacity, but it has some huge flaws, absolutely gigantic flaws, which I think I've exposed pretty well in this video. No prediction in this video, but this doing really a happy dance that <laughs> James Comey was on his ass. Ah yes, the herd versus pack mentality video. I like this one a lot. I like making it. I like thinking about it. I'm trying to take that type of level of thinking, that basic fundamental level of thinking when it comes to politics and moving it forward. Because it really, really does seem to be true. Uh, and I want to do another video in the coming days. I should probably do that next, in fact, about the center left and how they're trying to appease themselves to the far left, bring them back into the fold to re-coalesce on the herd. And you can see this all over the place. And I could pick up a number of different YouTubers and throw them all together, really with the same type of thinking in that regard. And also bring in Lacey Green and, and sort of what she's trying to do, even though I think she's, she's just doing it for relevance. Um, but you see the reaction to her from some of these people saying things like, yeah, well, I mean, they feel a certain way. Isn't that good enough? Well, no, that's that's not reality. So you can't just say, well, feelings are more important than reality. That's how we got into this problem in the first place. But I'll save all of that for the actual video. Suspicious... Oh, why are you jumping around on me? Suspicious murder of Seth Rich. It's still suspicious. Still a murder. And there are a lot of more clues associated with this, now that this guy kicked the bee's nest. In fact, there are two suspects in particular, who were also murdered. Another, it, it just, uh, the more that happens around this particular case, the more suspicious it gets. 
it was still probably John Podesta and Hillary Clinton who killed him, however, in my opinion, I think. Uh, this was proved right within like two days. And I knew it was going to be proved right within two days. He's just... The tactics that the White House is using currently, where they put up a false big name to throw people off, it monopolizes the news cycle for about 24 hours. And that's a good thing. And lastly, the video that I've just made, the Paris Climate Accord, uh, that's another victory dance similar to the FBI director firing. It's a small move. Well, James Comey was a bigger move, but it's a small move, and it's a good move in the right direction. So hopefully you like this video of me doing my little retrospective run-through. I should make a lot more predictions, um, crazy predictions, things that I still think will come true, but that are more extreme and try to push things, because that's the only way we can grow. Um, I haven't really been proven wrong on anything yet and I haven't gotten any responses from other YouTubers I expected after 20 videos or so I'd at least have one response from someone so maybe I should do more attack videos against people to see if I can just kick their beehives to see if they'll come after me and then we can have some sort of debate response 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 debate associated with that but who knows I mean with this many views it's not really small fries who, who really cares right I'm, I'm just throwing shit out into the ether it's really fun to do but if you have a video request that you'd like to see me cover or if you like a certain video if you like a certain style because I like to try a lot of different things uh, move around with a video that might be less edited like this one has nothing in it whatsoever not even any video or anything like that to something that's a lot more edited the video preceding it was a lot more edited which is probably the most edited video uh, the North Korea one I sliced up a lot of different things from that but it's probably some of these I need to even push that further. Just start throwing in some crazy shit just to see what it looks like and how it works out. But let me know what, what you guys think. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. Um, whether I'm an asshole or not, I don't really care. Um, if you want to tell me something, go ahead. If you don't, hey, enjoy the content. Thanks for listening.